Hey everybody and welcome back to Everything Tech and today we're taking a look at a product that's technology but uh, not in a way you may think it is. Yes, today we're taking a look at a pen, but this isn't just an ordinary pen, this is actually a fountain pen. And this one here, I actually purchased at a store, and that store was called uh, Daiso, which is, is the dollar store of Japan. And this was, in, in Japan it's 100 yen, but here in the United States it's $1.50. And I picked it up because I wanted to try fountain pens, although I've been always a, a big fan of fountain pens. I never really got around to purchasing one because they're usually more expensive, but since I did see this one for $1.50, I said why not, let's go ahead and try it. And I did purchase this, but then I went back to the store and I picked up this one. This one's a little more expensive, it's $5, and we're going to be unboxing it here and uh, taking a look at it. So what's the difference between a fountain pen and an ordinary ballpoint pen? So let's take a look at this uh, ballpoint pen here. Let's see how close we can get to the point there. You can see there it has a ball and you can see some of the ink there. And the way a ballpoint pen works is by having a reservoir of ink. Let's see if I can uh, take this one apart. Usually I can take these apart. And uh, actually, let's see. There you go. This one is a metal or aluminum uh, uh, little fountain here. Not a fountain, it's a reservoir of ink or an ink cartridge. And the ink flows through here down to the tip of the pen and it feeds to the roller ball there, which in turn um, writes on a piece of paper. And that's how these work. And fountain pens work in a similar fashion, although not exactly alike. They, they have, I'm going to actually set this one aside, I'll, t I'll put it apart, apart later because it, it takes a while to put that one apart. Should have gotten a much easier pen to use and now my hands are sticky because of the glue. And the way fountain pens work is very similar in that there's a reservoir, I'm going to take this one apart. This one you do have to take apart in order to replace the cartridge, which I did buy a few. I'll show you those in just a second. But here is the cartridge and the cartridge, the color of the ink is uh, blue-black, although it shows off more of a blue. The cartridge, which I can't take apart right now, but I'll show you in just a second, feeds the ink through the pen and it has a little wire going through to the reservoir and that feeds the nib, which is what the tip is called. And the nib is usually made of iridium, although this one doesn't really say it. Let's see how close I can get it. It says brillo, or brillo, I don't know, medium tip. And th the thing I love about fountain pens is the tip of the pen. In the, or the nib of the pen and it's usually designed in a more elegant fashion it usually has these really intricate details there and once the ink flows through here it feeds that little hole there because I know that that has ink there and say hello to my kitten here I have my cat for some reason she likes coming and seeing what I'm doing here but the the ink there if I were to rub my finger across that you see that the ink uh, rubs off on my finger there and the ink is fed there. Let me get my kitten out of the way. You can, come on, come on, come on, Beyonce. Yeah, her name is Beyonce. My sister loves uh, her music, so she named her cat after her. But uh, she's a very curious little kitten. Anyway, the ink feeds through that to that little hole there and goes down this little line you see here. Let's see how close I can get it. Let me zoom in just a little bit so we can get uh, really close. And as you can see there, that's the nib in a lot more detail. So the ink goes to that little hole there. There's like, you can barely see it there, but it's there. And it goes down that little line and to the tip, which is a medium tip. So if we flip this over, you may even see it, but that's where the ink comes out of that little hole there. And you can see there, there's even another line there. That line ha is like a little channel where the ink flows. And this here is what allows airflow, or controls the airflow, to refill the nib. And as you can see there, I got more ink on my fingers, but you can see there the ink. I'm going to go ahead and try to clean this as much as I can without messing, uh, messing it up. But that's the cartridge right there. Let's see if I can get this to focus again. There we go. And that's the ink cartridge right there. And I did say I was going to show you the cartridges, so we're going to go ahead and zoom right out of here. And I'll show you what the cartridges look like. Let me just uh, put this back together again. And this just closes up like that. But I believe the if, if we uh, pretend to close this up right here, we should have room for an extra cartridge. So it's always good. 
uh, to see if we can uh, fit an extra cartridge in there just in case we're out and about and the ink runs out. And my cat happened to be rid of the cap here, so she went to go and play with it for some reason. She finds it amusing, but we're gonna set the pen aside here. And we're gonna take a look at the cartridges. And yes, the cartridges are also $1.50. You can see that it's in Japanese here, so let's show, let me show you around. It's blue-black ink color. And it's this is in Japanese, but I can assure you it probably says exactly that. And it says five cartridges, and it does come with five cartridges, which is a really good deal for a dollar fifty. But they are pretty small. And the pen that I'm going to show you here, this one, it uses a cartridge that is slightly bit larger than this one, but it should work. So I'll be trying it out just to see if it works. And these are the cartridges for a dollar fifty. And uh, these are just some of the warnings in the back. Let me get in closer. Now the ink material is propylene dye and water, and it shows you there how to insert it to in uh, your pen there in Japanese, English, uh, and some other languages. And there's some cautions there. And as you can see there, quality and design by Daiso Japan. And for fountain pens, and for some reason, I can't read any of this. I, I'm not uh, experienced in reading Japanese, but it's good to see that they do include the English version of this. I have used the Translate app from Google and used the Translate with the camera. It uh, fairly works well. Occasionally it doesn't translate everything. It translates some words, but then again, it's good that it has this in English. And that, that's what the cartridges look like. So I'm not gonna take these out, mainly because I'm saving these for another day. But yeah, that's what the cartridges look like. And I will be showing you how the pen writes after we open the fancier pen, which is over here. As you can see, it does say a uh, fountain pen. And the reason why I haven't taken it out of the plastic is because the plastic has a bunch of information which I'm gonna show you and most of the information from this pen is similar to the pen that I have over here this white one and this one does come in two different colors it comes in white and it comes in silver and the silver is sort of a metallic silver as well as a white the white is sort of like a metallic color I got the white one because I felt that it was a, a lot nicer than the silver one and this one here comes in black and uh, silver, I think. It's more of like a metallic silver, metal silver, uh, more, more chromey type color, but that one my cousin got when I took him to the store because he wanted to go. So we have this one here. It says there, medium thickness includes one ink cartridge and the color is blue black. And uh, material, the fountain pen is iron, copper, and acrylic. And now I see why this one was $5 and this one was $1.50 because this one, the material is plastic and aluminum and aluminum tends to be a lot cheaper than iron. But this one does have a lot more weight to it and it tells you how to use it. Remove the fountain pen cylinder and insert the cartridge with the tip up. And I'll show you how to do that, how to insert the tip. And it tells you to allow some time for the ink to flow to the nib that way you can start writing it it's not it's not like uh, you can start writing right away you have to let the ink flow to the nib and the nib has to soak up that ink and then you can start writing that's why I open this this one beforehand so I can let the ink soak up and I can try it out try to see, make sure that I did pay a dollar fifty for a fountain pen that works and there's some cautions there you can go ahead and pause and read if you want and it says a product contains chemicals known to the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. And I don't understand what this means. The 400 writing number one. If you do know, go ahead and drop it in the comments and I'll, I'll find myself learning something new, which is always good. And there's just some more stuff there. Quality and designed by Daiso. And there's my cat playing with the pen again. But that's the pen, and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom right out so I can show you the actual box. Take this out, and it does say there, fountain pen, and it's in Spanish, pluma estilografía, which is basically fountain pen in Spanish, and then a Daiso D fountain pen, and that's what the pen looks like. We'll take a look at the pen in closer detail once I get it out. Cartridge type, medium thickness, and my cat's playing with the pen again, I better put it over here somewhere. And cartridge type, medium thickness, includes one ink cartridge, and the color is blue-black. Nothing on the sides or the back of the box, it's just the front of the box that has all that information, which is why I didn't want to take the little plastic off, 
because that's where most of the warning labels and information are. So this box you just push to slide out. We're gonna put, set this aside. And this, yeah, there's my cat again. She really likes it when I film videos and she likes to come see what I'm doing. Typically, I usually put her in the room and close the door. That way she doesn't bother, but I'll let her out this time just so she's out and about. She had a fever yesterday, so I had to I have to keep an eye on her. But anyway, here is the fountain pen and the inside material of the box is sort of like a felt material. And here is the pen itself, so we're going to go ahead and try to take this out. There you go. We're gonna set the box aside after there's nothing, after all there's nothing in here except more cardboard and stuff like that. But you can always save the box as a carrying case or if you really wanna store the pen for later use, you can store it in here. But taking a look at the pen, it's actually got more weight to it than this one even though, actually this one's bigger than the little one here and I think I'm gonna like this one more because it's a lot more heavier, it has a lot more weight to it. But let's go ahead and take the cap off. And you can hear something shaking in there, and that's actually the the cartridge, which I'll show you in just a second. But let's see the tip here. Let me show you what the tip is like, the nib. And it says, Rosso Bianco. Rosso Bianco. I'm not sure what that, uh, if that's a brand or anything. But let's see if there, we can get any ink off of there. And you can see there's no ink there, of course, because there's no ink cartridge. But you can see here, the one thing that I do love about fountain pens and the nib. The nib is actually very intricate and there's other other nibs, the more expensive or the more expensive they are, the more money you're willing to spend, the nicer the nib would be. Sometimes you get them two-tone colors, uh, white gold and uh, yellow gold or sometimes full yellow gold and uh, different colors, different styles and then the engraving is different. Although this one does look nice, there's nicer ones out there. And you can see the little channel here for ink. On the other side, you can see the channel there as well. You may say, why did I pay $5 for this pen when both of these are nearly identical? But you can see there that the, the nib is actually bigger. This one here is the $1.50 one and this one here is the $5 one. It's a, a, it's a little bigger. I'm not sure how different it's gonna be in here. Here's my cat over here playing with the pen cap again. I better leave it here just in case she decides to lose the other one, lose it like the other one. But you can see here that the nib, they're, they're nearly identical but um, one of them is much bigger than the other. This one here is much smaller than this one, although both claim to be medium, but that's how much they write. It's a medium uh, pen here. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this one aside. And that's the nib. And to take it apart, you just unscrew it. And there you go, there's the ink cartridge. And the reason why I feel like there's gonna be a problem with the ink cartridge, although they're both identical, in um, adapters here, not adapters, but like tip here, is the size of uh, the the ink cartridge. You can see here that these are um, slightly a bit larger, but they look identical from the tip, so they should work. They're only slightly a bit larger. And to connect the ink cartridge to the pen, all you would have to do is look inside, and you can see that little post there in the middle. You gotta make sure you pop this on that post and by pop it, I literally mean pop it, and I'll, sh I'll try to get the sound of it so you can hear it. Let me try to connect it here so I make sure it's well connected. And you heard that pop there, and once you see it steady there, you're good. Just let it sit there for a bit, and we're gonna go ahead and pop the cover on again. Let me zoom out here. And we're gonna pop the cover on here. And we're going to go ahead and try out the other pen while this one sits because it's getting all that ink down into the nib. So we're just going to close it up and let it sit for a while. But uh, this is the uh, fountain pen that was $1.50. So how well does it write? Let's see. Let me get in closer here so you see the writing. And I'm just going to write YouTube. Uh, YouTube. Everything tech channel. Now I don't have the best of high handwriting, and I don't know how to write in calligraphy or, or handwriting and stuff like that. But I still love the 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 way it feels when you when you draw with a pen like this, because it gives you a different sort of feeling, 
in that it's, it doesn't feel like a ballpoint pen like the one I have over here, which uh, let me put back together and show you what that one writes like. It's just your ordinary average uh, ballpoint pen. So let me go ahead and write just again, YouTube channel or YouTube. And this is actually black ink, straight black ink. And you can see there, YouTube compared to YouTube. Of course, this one started writing out pretty sketchy because we did put our finger over the little, the little reservoir there that feeds the nib. And uh, there was a uh, lack of ink, but YouTube there. And I'm gonna write YouTube with uh, the fountain pen right, actually right below it. And you can see there, that's the difference in uh, the pen there. And let's just write the name of the month. June. And regular June. <laughs> and let's try to write it lighter. And you can see there it's more even. And right here, when you see it in person, you can see that there's a lot of ink uh, down here in the corner there. Down here, actually in the lower half of the of the word June has a lot of ink and that's because mainly the way you use the pen. Same goes for the Everything Tech uh, channel name here. There's a lot of ink on the bottom side, especially here in the T. It has a lot of ink there. So let's try to see if, if our, our new fountain pen, the $5 one, is uh, good to go. So it said do not shake, so try not to shake it. But uh, let's see what that one writes like. See if it's starting to write. Nope, not yet. Nope, we're just gonna let this sit for a while, and once it's ready, I'll be back. So we're back here, and as you can see here, I wrote Daiso just to check that the pen works. So let's zoom in here, and it works. So let's go ahead and zoom into June here so we can write next to it in my really bad handwriting here. June. That's illegible, but as you can see, this is true black ink. And it's a lot thicker than than the dollar fifty pens. So we're gonna go ahead and write it in regular June and in light. And the one thing I'm noticing right out, right right away is that June is a lot thicker written in the five dollar pen. It's much thicker in writing, although it doesn't really state if it's medium thickness or what whatever thickness this pen may be i believe the plastic wrapper does say it actually the box says it the box says cartridge type medium thickness but then again this one says it's medium thickness too but it writes completely different it could be the different types of inks that are used but to be honest i do like this pen i do like it a lot but i don't like how it writes too thick i usually like how these write these write a lot more better Hello world, and that's hello world in uh, the dollar fifty pen, and in the the five dollar pen. Actually, now that I'm actually starting to write with it, it actually feels smoother than this one. And as you can see, the H here, it takes a while for the ink to actually start uh, getting itself onto the paper, but on here it works right away. So let's go ahead and write. I don't know. Summertime. Summertime. If only you could see it. There you go. Summertime. And with the with the fifty a dollar fifty pen, let's write summertime again. And as you can see, as soon as you start writing, the first letter here it takes a while for the ink to start getting itself on paper again. But with a slightly bit more expensive $5 pen, it actually is ready right away. And I did some research, and this pen's supposed to be a rebranded version of some other pen. I'm not sure how accurate it is, I literally just saw it. And it says that it's a rebranded uh, Jin Hao pen. And I did look up some Jin Hao pens, and they do look, look similar, but I don't know. I don't want to say it's a rebranded version of a pen. I just want to take it for what it is, and it's a $5 pen that I got at Daiso. And that's going to be it for today, taking a look at the fountain pens. 
and uh, two different versions of the fountain pen. We have $5 and $1.50. Depending on how much you're willing to spend, you saw how both of them write. And although this isn't really technology, it's actually really is technology. It's old technology and um, in technology and claimed to be invented by Leonardo da Vinci during the Renaissance period. But nonetheless, it's technology and it's something different that I really wanted to add to the channel. I may start doing flashlights because I do have a collection of flashlights and I do love flashlights myself as much as I do the classic writing feel of fountain pens. With that being said, thank you all for watching and see you all in the next video.